been continuing to ask the question, where are we? And how do we know that we've arrived at that place, for want of a better description, that is beyond such at under, or beyond being in bondage to the thrall or the machinations of a mind. And over these last days, through the stories, we've explored the possibility of gleaning those things that were once present in our life that are now absent and there's no need to enumerate them because they're many. But what about those things that may be present in our life now that were not there before, which are indicative of this place. And as a reminder of several stories, and when we put them together, maybe they'll help us to glean what it is that's now present for us that was absent before. The first story is that story about Zaki. Now Zaki was a very fine man. He gave arms, he followed the tenets of the religion of his day, and he was a good man. In fact, he was manifesting distinct signs of enlightenment. And this was noticed by the gods. So they decided to send him blessings. But you know it is with the gods that their energies are so refined that they cannot manifest themselves into base matter. But they were able to manifest in the refined body of a dove. So, as it so happened, Zaki began to notice that when something fortuitous or serendipitous happened in his life, there was the presence of a dove. So Zaki began to gather doves. He got two lovebirds which he put in a cage. He started to make doves the motive on his shirts. He had tattoos of doves put on his body. So it wasn't long before the gods realized that the blessing they were sending Zaki had turned into a curse. So they withdrew their boon. The second story is about that rich merchant. Oh, he too was a good man. He did good deeds. In his travels he gave boons and arms to people in need. But he was beset by bad luck. His ships floundered at sea. His goods were stolen and he was ashamed to show his face amongst the rich merchants and traders with whom he had been pleased to cohort before. 
So in his shame, he sold off the last pieces of good that he had, and he set out to be a wanderer. But in his wanderings, when he came to a desert, he was laid on by robbers who took everything that he had, leaving him only the clothes that he was wearing. So he staggered on. The sun burnt his skin. His clothes became ragged. He had to beg for food and lodging. Finally, he came to a place where he went for prayers to the mosque and he approached the Imam for largesse. The Imam said, We are a poor village. I can give you but a few coins. But three days ride from here, there is a kingdom in which the king is known for his kindness to all. If you can find your way there, perhaps you will receive what it is that you need. But you know, three days ride is very different from being on foot. So the journey that would take three days ride took our man Rahim much, much longer. He staggered through the gates of the city and came to the palace walls. But when he arrived there, gathered around were all those people in need. And Rahim saw the king sitting in splendor, giving out his largesse. But Rahim was blackened by the sun and ragged of clothing. He dared not even show his face amongst the poor of that place. So he hid behind a pillar. And with his stomach grumbling, he watched as those in need gathered around to receive the food and gifts of the monarch. But as Rahim was viewing this scene, he noticed that there were three large and handsome wolf hounds on the fringe of the crowd. One quite close to the pillar behind which he was hiding. As he watched, three servants came out with large bowls of food for the hounds and their bowls were placed in front of them. The hound that was near to Rahim's pillar was so close he could smell the succulent morsels of meat that were contained in the dog's golden bowl. And he eyed it saliva coming to his mouth. As he was looking, it seemed 
and indeed it happened that the hound dog looked up from its bowl and gazed at Rahim, their eyes meeting in almost a human understanding. And as Rahim looked, the dog pushed its bowl over towards him, offering him its contents. Rahim took a morsel of the meat and ate it hungrily and pushed the bowl back to the dog. But the dog again pushed it in front of Rahim, almost verbally indicating to him, fill, satiate yourself, which Rahim did. And then when he pushed the bowl back to the dog, the dog finished eating what remained. After licking the bowl clean, the great hound pushed the bowl towards Rahim as if to say, take it. So casting aside all of those morals that were deeply embedded in him, Rahim took the bowl and put it inside his ragged garments. After the throng was dispersed, Rahim took the golden bowl to a jeweler in the village who gave him a princely sum with which he was able not only to find employment but to start his own little business and being an astute businessman very soon Rahim had been returned to his previous state of wealth. With his wealth he returned to his hometown where he was greeted by all his friends and took up his residence once again. But his conscience pricked him. He had stolen the golden bowl. So, wishing to make retribution, Rahim went to a jeweler's and replicated the golden bowl and dressing himself in fine garments on a great horse, he rode towards that place where he had received the blessing. When he entered the city gates, to his great surprise, he found the city in ruins. What had once been a thriving <coughs> metropolis was now rubble, the shops and houses empty. And when he came to the palace gates, now hanging loose, and entered, the palace too was in ruins. But as he entered, three handsome hounds came dashing out from the stones and rubble, and he recognized them as being those that had been present. And they were followed by an old man, a long beard, a simple rough cloak over his shoulders. The old man carrying his staff asked Rahim 
Why have you come? Why are you here? And Rahim told his story. The old man said, Ah, yes, my kingdom now lies in ruins. I was beset by marauders who destroyed my city and carried away its people. Rahim attempted to give the golden ball back to the old king, but the old king said, I have no need of such as this. My life is simple. My dogs catch wild animals, and my gardener who remains with me has a little vegetable garden, and he grows roses. We have sufficient for our simple needs. Keep your golden bowl. Rahim, taking the bowl humbly, mounted his horse and turned to ride away. When he looked back, there was the old king, his simple cloak, his dogs around him, waving farewell. Rahim returned to his home, but forever after, he would often tell the tale, the story of his meeting with the king's dog. What is it? What are those things, things they are, that are present in our life now, that were absent before? What gleaning do these stories stir in us as to what is present in our awareness now. Not signs and symbols, superstitions, rituals, mantras, affirmations, such as were present before, certainly present. What are these things that are now with you that were not there before? Or what do these stories evoke in us? <laughs> 